Hello, welcome to Software Dude. In the world of database management, the choice between SQL, which is structured query language, and NoSQL, which is not only structured query language, databases is crucial for system design, right? And when we are discussing system design uh, and trade offs, uh, trade off between SQL and NoSQL, which is probably one of the most debated topics, without that, uh, it would be incomplete. So, uh, the decision to choose SQL versus NoSQL, it impacts scalability, uh, I mean performance, complexity, and the ability to meet specific re like application requirements, right? So let's get started in this doc in this video. We are going to discuss about you know, the system design trade-offs between SQL and NoSQL, no and hopefully by the end of the video, I'll have a, uh, a unbiased view of SQL versus NoSQL. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. Uh, SQL, so SQL is a relational uh, database management system, right? It is RDMS, where the uh, like the it primarily uses a structured schema and tables to store data, right? Um, SQL, Postgres, Oracle, MySQL Server, those are all uh, SQL databases. Uh, but SQL databases like RDBMS systems have very specific characteristics, right? Uh, which is schema based uh, schema based basically means that there is a very structured schema with um, predefined rows columns right and table definitions right uh, which is why it is schema based acid compliant which means it guarantees acid properties which is atomicity consistency isolation and uh, durability right structured query language obviously we use sql for querying and managing data right and also it supports relationships, right? Which is primarily helpful when you can basically support complex joins, right? And relationship between tables, right? One table's primary key, another table's foreign key, and you can build relationships and you can perform multiple complex joins to produce data that you are storing in different subsets in different structured manner in different tables, right? So that's SQL. Now let's discuss NoSQL, right? So NoSQL basically it it encompasses a wide variety of database technologies, right? NoSQL is in itself not a specific database technology, but it, anything which is not SQL is considered as NoSQL. And you should look at our database engine uh, playlist where we are talking about time series and uh, document databases, multimodal databases, right? We'll also discuss about geospatial databases. So these are these are all types of databases which are NoSQL databases, which are basically designed to handle unstructured, you know, semi-structured, or highly dynamic data, right? Some of the examples that I've mentioned here are uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis, DynamoDB, Couchbase. Those are all uh, NoSQL databases. Uh, NoSQL databases also uh, follow certain characteristics, right? Uh, first is obviously it is schema-less, which means uh, it is flexible schemas, uh, which can handle vari like variety of data formats, right? You don't need to stick to a schema for a table, right? Uh, some some uh, tables obviously need a primary key or say division between a partition key and a sort key, but those are the primary keys, but you don't need to really define the entire structure of the table, right? Now, base compliant, which means it is basically uh, available, uh, soft state and eventually consistent, right? Uh, it vary data models that we talked about, like it includes document databases, key value databases, like uh, column family databases, graph databases, time series. So a lot of types of data models can be supported under this category, this bucket of NoSQL databases. And then obviously scalability, one of the most primary reasons why uh, NoSQL has become famous is because it is designed for horizontal scalability, right, across distributed architectures. So that is a, a humongous use case because of which NoSQL databases became famous, right. So now let's look at the trade-offs, right. First of all, obviously scalability. SQL is uh, vertically scalable, which is uh, which means you can add more instances on top of one another, but it is vertically scaling. But it can, like performing horizontal scaling is very complex in SQL database, right? But in NoSQL, it is built for horizontal scaling. 
different use cases have different needs but vertical scaling always has a limitation right how many capacity how much capacity how much power can you add to one system you have to think about that when you're thinking about vertical uh, like scaling right but horizontal scaling is you can add the same capacity same storage same uh, compute same everything and keep adding that horizontally right you don't have to build one top of the other it's like talking about how tall can you build a building rather why not we build multiple buildings of say uh, x floors right so it's like that Availability, yes, uh, SQL databases can be obviously uh, less available, uh, primarily in distributed systems, that becomes a problem. Uh, no SQL databases, obviously, uh, they prioritize availability, right, and they, like partition tolerance, like one of the famous databases, DynamoDB by AWS, they, I think, support 5.9 availability, right. So, availability is one of the key factors uh, in uh, no, no SQL databases. Uh, then comes performance, right. Uh, SQL databases can suffer large like data sets and high read loads. There are optimization strategies in today's world which can be applied. Uh, but in no SQL database, it is optimized for high read, right, and uh, write throughput. Uh, so uh, because no SQL databases are primarily built for a very specific, highly scalable kind of systems, and where where this uh, you know D2C kind of uh, markets and applications SaaS applications have made this uh, more famous right uh, like Facebook's Amazon and Google's of the world have the kind of data needs that they have and the scale needs that they have in the last one or two decades uh, which is why the NoSQL databases have gained popularity right uh, but obviously uh, SQL databases have more more ben uh, some benefits also like for example uh, the structure right i mean if sql databases wherever you are storing structured data right no one can beat sql databases uh, no sql databases obviously are for unstructured and semi structured data uh, but if you are very concrete about the type of data that you are storing and the structure is is concretized you don't want a flexible schema then sql is better obviously then is consistency and data integrity right uh, SQL obviously supports acid properties, right, which means that consistency, atomicity, durability, like those kind of things are inbuilt into a relational database that is that supports SQL, right. But uh, no SQL are base compliance, which means those are eventually consistent. So if you have uh, an application need which needs to, uh, it can't wait, it is very latency sensitive, time sensitive kind of a data and it always have to operate on term in terms of a uh, can't be eventually consistent right i mean it has to be very strong consistent uh, in those kind of cases uh, no sql databases might not be the best case but no sql databases also in i mean some of the latest variations uh, like it doesn't mean that no sql databases will only have eventual consistent and some of the no sql databases have also started to 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 give strong consistency support right depending on your data needs uh, so uh, that is there uh, but in SQL databases, that's like inbuilt, right? Uh, next is obviously query complexity because that is what you are using the database for to query and read from uh, from the databases. SQLs, like we talked about, because it supports multiple relationships, it can support complex joins and transactions, right? Uh, which is super useful if you are building like data lakes for example if you ask me right uh, if you are building very transactional systems right if you are building where there is there is complex join needed but also data integrity and transaction based systems are needed you need you need atomicity in operations right those kind of things by default uh, sql databases rdbms databases provide and which is why the query complexity becomes um, the complexity in terms of the query is complex but uh, from a system perspective that makes it easier right under one complex query you can solve multiple problems but the other way around would be if you were only to look up you would be looking up multiple databases no sql databases and then massaging all these responses together in your application right you have to write the code here you are pushing that responsibility to the database by only performing one query using a complex join right so that is why sql is useful at times depending on your data data relationship uh, uh, no sql databases have very limited support for complex queries so even in today's world if you see that there are 
um, uh, there are several NoSQL databases and many companies might use NoSQL databases at the end of the day uh, for their real-time data needs but analytics use cases reporting right metrics right dashboarding like those kind of use cases you will see still kind of they try to fall under uh, try to follow SQL databases or even if they can't follow they what they do is they move to a data lake kind of architectures which source data from from multiple uh, you know no sql databases and then build a sql like rdbms like capability on top of uh, the source data from multiple no sql databases right so that is also very useful in today's world so so different trade offs between sql and no sql or uh, some of the use cases that i can talk about in sql databases like in in, uh, in uh, rdbms systems are financial systems financial systems which require transaction like consistency are primarily use rdbms systems like banking systems like transaction systems they primarily use sql systems uh, applications which have obviously query complex uh, like complex queries and uh, relationships wherever that is there like one of the major use cases that i have seen in my past it might not be the right architecture but definitely uh, at that point of time it worked was uh, was a supply chain right i mean in supply chain the complexity of uh, of data right and also in terms of your forecasting planning item bombs uh, materials then labor then obviously transport and then location and then delivery like everything that ties together it is very relationship based right so so uh, in those kind of situ situations uh, rdbms like systems uh, can operate and in today's world most of the supply chain uh, providers or kind of saas applications which provide also at the background uh, their real backbone is really sql databases though they they try to provide variety of no sql solutions but i think i think the uh, the sql databases are much more stable uh, uh, and when when your systems need high data integrity like in terms of healthcare databases like you your database uh, has a very high integrity or they have requirements or compliances like high trust and hipaa and all those things right so in that cases uh, sql databases might be useful uh, no sql databases on the other hand have different use cases which is like uh, there can be big data applications, right? There can be content management. Social network is a huge example, right? Which use graph databases and like multiple time series databases and those kind of things. IoT applications which need high throughput, right? High right throughput. Uh, they use NoSQL databases. Um, so NoSQL databases are also also obviously gaining a lot of a lot of uh, traction in the recent times, right? So the choice between NoSQL and SQL, I mean, if 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 someone says that, uh, I mean, SQL is bad and NoSQL is good or NoSQL is bad, SQL is good, always respond, depends, right? I mean, it depends on the trade-offs. Both has their positives, both have their negatives, right? And it depends on the trade-offs and the choice between SQL and the NoSQL database basically depends on the your, your specific requirements of, of your application right which can be the data structure the scalability needs the consistency requirements uh, performance expectations right so there can be multiple things to consider when you are choosing a database system right uh, understanding these kind of trade-offs basically help in making an informed decision that is what we want to do like when we are when we are designing core infrastructure foundational systems at that point of time you want to make a in, make an informed decision like you have you have looked at all the trade-offs and while you are taking the decision it is it is not a guess right uh, that basically uh, helps you align with your goal constraints of the system that you are designing right so that was the system design trade-off between uh, sql and no sql hopefully you liked it thanks for watching